Rett syndrome is a debilitating neurological condition caused by mutations in a gene called MECP2. Genes are made up of DNA, which is made up of bases called A, T, G, and C. A always pairs with T, and G always pairs with C. This order spells out the exact instructions required to create a particular organism with its own unique traits. The DNA bases are organized like a twisted ladder with the bonds between the rungs that can be unzipped like a zipper. A single strand of DNA is made up of many bases and every three bases encode an amino acid which form an amino acid chain. The chain that makes up the MECP2 protein is made up of almost 500 amino acids. Although genes get a lot of attention, it's the proteins that perform most life functions and make up the majority of cellular structures. Chemical properties that distinguish the 20 different amino acids cause the chains to fold up into specific three-dimensional structures, which define their particular functions in the cell. A gene mutation is a permanent change in the DNA sequence. Mutations range in size from only one base to a large segment of DNA comprising many genes. By changing a gene's instructions for making a protein, a mutation can cause the protein to malfunction or to be missing entirely. Mutations fall under several categories. Missense mutation. This type of mutation is a change in one DNA base pair that results in the substitution of one amino acid for another. For example, in the most common RET mutation at base 473, there should have been a C base, but due to the mutation there is now a T. This results in a different amino acid being encoded. At amino acid number 158, there should have been a threonine, but now there is a methionine. The name for this mutation is known as T158M. This simple change of only one amino acid out of almost 500 amino acids makes the protein dysfunctional. Nonsense mutation. A nonsense mutation is also a change in one DNA base pair. Instead of substituting one amino acid for another, the altered DNA sequence prematurely signals the cell to stop building a protein. This type of mutation results in a shortened protein that will function improperly or not at all. The X denotes a mutation that results in a prematurely truncated protein. Frameshift mutation. This type of mutation occurs when the addition or loss of DNA bases changes a gene's reading frame. A reading frame consists of groups of three bases that each encode for one amino acid. A frameshift mutation shifts the grouping of these bases and changes the code for amino acids. As in the case of nonsense mutations, parts of the protein that are downstream of a frameshift mutation are rendered non-functional. Insertions, deletions, and duplications can all be frameshift mutations. So of these three types of mutation, only missense mutations accurately pinpoint a site that cannot be altered. A study published today in Nature Neuroscience led by Adrian Bird of the University of Edinburgh and co-authored by Matthew List in collaboration with Michael Greenberg and Daniel Ebert of Harvard Medical School, found that a cluster of Rett syndrome missense mutations prevent the binding of MECP2 to an essential partner protein. The Bird and Greenberg labs have been working together since 2011 as members of the MECP2 consortium along with Gail Mandel. At first inspection, mutations appear to occur all the way along the MECP2 gene, suggesting that the entire length of the protein is important. The Bird Lab members decided to focus on missense mutations, since this type of genetic error changes only one amino acid and can therefore lead us to structurally important locations of the protein. Now we are left with two distinct clusters. One cluster disrupts the methyl CPG binding domain of the protein. This part of MECP2 is known to bind DNA, and many of these mutations prevent this interaction. The second cluster spans amino acids 302 to 306. 
The Bird Lab hypothesized that this section of the protein is where MECP2 binds to a protein partner. Subsequent experiments reveal that partner to be the NCOR complex. NCOR, which stands for Nuclear Receptor Co-Repressor, is a large protein complex involved in silencing genes. Silencing is achieved by repressing transcription, the first step by which genes make proteins. The scientists hypothesized that the key function of MECP2 is to act as a bridge between DNA and the NCOR complex. Mutations in the methyl binding domain disrupt MECP2's ability to bind to methylated DNA. Mutations in the 302 to 306 cluster disrupt MECP2's ability to bind to NCOR. In both of these scenarios, MECP2 is unable to bridge the NCOR complex to DNA. Can this bridging function account for all cases of Rett syndrome? Many of the nonsense and frame shift mutations cause truncations that exclude either the MBD and or the NCOR domain, and therefore the bridging function is abolished. However, some Rett causing mutations are found outside of these two domains, and therefore leave both the MBD and the NCOR domain intact. The Bird Lab hypothesizes that these mutations either render the protein unstable and therefore degradable, or that the mutations cause abnormal folding of the protein that interferes with the MBD and or the NCOR domain. Testing of this hypothesis is now a priority. Another area of priority for the Bird Lab is to understand why abolishing bridging between DNA and NCOR leads to Rett syndrome. The hypothesis is lack of repression of downstream genes, but this needs to be proven. MECP2 has been implicated in a variety of molecular processes, suggesting that the causes of Rett syndrome are complex. What remained unknown was whether these processes are relevant to Rett syndrome. The Bird Lab puts forth a simpler hypothesis for the cause of Rett syndrome. Failure to bridge NCOR to DNA underlies the pathology of this disorder. 